Good morning. And welcome to worship with us this morning as we come to hear the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us all together rise and begin our service with the ringing of a church bell. Continue in our baptismal grace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your harmless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, Upon this, your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as a judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his returning with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God. Now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34, beginning with the 11th verse. The Old Testament reading can be found on page 837 of your Pew Bible. For this is what the sovereign Lord says I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be the prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with the 20th verse. The epistle reading can be found on page 1116 of your pew Bible. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each of us in his own turn, Christ the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself, who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him so that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Holy Gospel can be found on page 962 of your pew Bible. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did you see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these my brothers of mine, you did it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do it for me. Then they will go away to the eternal punishment, but the righteous will enter eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever been in need in life? Have you ever been in a situation where you just, you simply needed someone else to help? As young children, we tend to have great needs that our parents fulfill for us. And there's even some older children that still rely on their parents as well. In fact, I think that's part of the whole issue. You know, as we get older, we always are used to this reliance on someone providing for us. On someone giving to us. On someone setting aside for us. And as we get older, we enjoy it. We expect it to still happen. We want it to still be the case. Except when it comes to our own abilities and freedoms. You know, I remember as I grew up, you know, much like the young people of today, you know, I wanted independence. I wanted to be able to make my own decisions. Until such time that I had that independence and that freedom, 
And then I wanted my mom and dad to take care of things for me. Because after all, it's so much easier to rely on someone else to do things, right? For someone else to provide for us, whether it be a meal, whether it be financial, whether it be any kind of thing, it's a whole lot easier for someone to just say here and you receive than it is for you to put, as they used to say, hands to the plow. You know, there's something to be said about being a farmer, right? I mean, God told Adam that he was going to have to till the earth and live off of it. I mean, cutting new ground in our society today is, is not a problem. You know, you just hook up the tractor, right, Scott? Just cut it away. No big deal, right? But it's a whole lot different if you've got to hook the horses up, you've got to stand behind a plow, and there's a single blade. It's a whole lot different when you're cutting new ground that way. And yet for us today in our society... We are used to, not only in our own personal lives, but also in our lives as citizens, to be given to, to be provided for. And yet there's this great confusion theologically when it comes to salvation. You see, we don't want that when it comes to salvation. We want to play a part. We want to be motivated and told that if we just do more, if we just give more, we can earn our way. And to me, there's a, a great confusion that's going on there, right? Right? As individuals and as a childlike attitude, we want people to provide. But when it comes to Christ, it's, it's not enough. That simple free gift of salvation, one for us through death and resurrection, it can't just be enough. And yet today we have in a gospel lesson a great text that, that reminds us all that the simplistic way of sharing God's love in the world is right before our eyes. It's right there in every part of our life that we live. Jesus reminds the faithful and the unfaithful, when I was naked, you gave me clothes. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. When I was alone, you just you sat there and comforted me. And much like the unfaithful, the Christian said, Lord, when did I do those things? I don't remember ever doing those things, Lord. And Jesus said the very simplistic words, whatever you have done to the least of these, my brothers, you have done it unto me. You know, Lutherans struggle day in and day out, as I shared in Bible class, with sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, this concept of evangelizing, this concept of making disciples is so hard for the historic Lutheran. I mean, just think about it. As I talked to the Bible class this morning, in the old days, what did we do? We built a church and they came to us. Immigration, right? The Germans came over and the Lutherans just said, let's find a good place to build it. We'll build it and the church will fill up. Then we relied on childbirth, right? Just keep having kids. That's the way to do it. I mean, you know, just keep having children. And then we hit a peak about the 60s and 70s and what happened? We stopped having children, and immigration to the Lutherans stopped happening. You know, we stopped bringing over Germans to the Lutheran church. And now we find ourselves here some 40 years later figuring out how do we grow God's church? How, how do we evangelize to the community? Because none of you are going to get out and do the old-fashioned Lutheran thing, doof, 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 you know, knock on a door. So how do we do it? Where do we come up with this ability to share the love of Jesus Christ? Well, my friends, Jesus tells us today how we do it. He tells us very clearly how we do it. When they're naked, feed, uh, clothe them. When they're hungry, feed them. When they're sick, take care of them. When they're lonely, go visit them. Not just the pastor, by the way. That's you too. When they have needs, be there to take care of them. That's how you share God's love with the world. You care about people in the same way that Jesus has cared about you. You care about the needs of those who don't have. You know, I was uh, in Bible class on Wednesday and we talked about the fact that the reality in the Bible is clear. The poor will always be with us, the Bible says. So what does that mean to the church? We always have something to do. And yet we always pine and and lament about, you know, 
what should we do in the church and, and how should we grow the church. Stop worrying about some fancy program that some mega church out there has got that's working for them and start doing what God himself has told us to do. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Because in loving thy neighbor as thyself, you have done what the Bible says this morning makes you righteous in God's sight. Because in faith, you declare the love and praises of Jesus Christ by doing what Jesus himself has done. You know that classic uh, 90s uh, philosophy and theology of what would Jesus do? Well, it's simple what Jesus would do. He loved you this much that he gave up his life. And the Bible is clear about that one, by the way, isn't it? There's no greater love than this, than to give up your life for a friend, to care for the needs of those who don't have as much. You know, this ties in together with all of our theology of stewardship as well. You know, being a good steward of God's resources is not the old classic hoarding mentality of put it in the jar and bury it in the backyard. Put it to work, the Bible says. Don't try to save it for some day down the road that in some way there's this magical thing that's going on there. No, God says, I give it to you to use it. Because if you don't use it, God says what? I will take it from you and I will give it to somebody who is using it for my glory and as a good steward and not as some kind of a great historic German who goes and buries it in the backyard like my great-grandmother. Which, by the way, even to this day, I go over to her house and I try to find if the jar is still in the ground. I'll be there this week, and I know I'll take my annual pilgrimage with my spear and try to find that jar. But, I mean, you think about it. That was the mentality through, through the Depression, right? We can't trust the bank, so we got to put it in a jar or under the bed or in the backyard because we can't trust it'll be there, and the only safe way to trust it is to keep it. And so it creates in us this idea that God will be happy with us the bigger that we have, the more that we grow, and yet he looks down and says, there was one there that was hungry, and what, what did you do for the one that was hungry? He says to us, there was one who didn't have clothes. What did you do to help the one who didn't have clothes? There was one sitting there on the side of the street who was lonely, and yet you walked right on by. Or the classic one for many of you, you're driving on the highway, there's someone who's a uh, you know, flat tire on the side of the road, and you just wave. How you doing? Let me use my OnStar button and call for help. Because after all, it's much easier for us to rely on someone else, is it not? Look at the, gospel, or the Old Testament lesson for today. The good news is this, that God the Father did not send someone else. He sent his only begotten son, the shepherd of the sheep. He sent the one who was not the hired hand. He sent the one who out of love came and did what you and I are incapable of doing. And that's fully loving each other because we don't love ourselves. He sent Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the entire sin of the world. The shepherd who goes after all the sheep, even the sheep that don't love him. I mean, that takes our God to do that. We can be kings of this world and build up great reserves and we can, we can plan for the future. And yet we forget that today has its own needs. Today has the need of using the resources God has given to us. And today is a day of being thankful for those resources and not looking ahead to what you might do later, but what you will do right now for God's glory and kingdom and take care of those whom he loves. You know, in Bible class on Wednesday mornings, those of you who are on Wednesday morning study know this, you know, I came across a great uh, uh, theology and a great biblical text that I've always known is there, but it just hit me. Jesus says that we must first take those, care of those of the household of faith. And it specifically says in the Bible, your own family. Right? Your own family. And yet, there are so many people that forget that their family, and I'm not just talking about your children, because, you know, it's easy to talk about your children. But your family are God's people. The family in the household of faith. God the Father loved us so much that he did not entrust salvation to anyone else but his own begotten son. That one, the one who was not going to fail, the one who was not going to hand it off to someone else, the one who was willing to stand in the fire to be ridiculed and mocked, to be tempted by Satan, to stand there and say, I love you this much. And he stretched out his hand. And he bled. That's the Savior and the shepherd that we have. That's the Jesus Christ that we are called by God to share. That's the love that we are called by God to share with those who are naked, hungry, 
poor, lonely. That's what God has asked of us. So make no mistake about it. We all need help at some level and some capacity. And the older you get, by the way, the more stubborn you get about receiving that help, right? I'm the opposite. The older I get, the more I'm very much open to receiving whatever people want to bestow, right? And that comes from the idea that God first loved us. We didn't love him. So as you get older, don't get so stubborn in this idea of, you know, I don't need help because you're sinning. You're sinning before God. You do need help. And that help comes in the form of one man, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, the honor, and praise, both now and forevermore. In his name we say, amen. May God the Father who gives us the great gift of his Son, may God the Son who gives us the great gift of his life and death, and may God the Holy Spirit who continues to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you be with you this day as you rejoice this week in the thanksgiving of all the great things God has given to you, both now and evermore. Amen. In that same joy and thanksgiving, let us worship the Lord with our offering. Let us together rise for the offertory. As you, Lord, have made it for others, so may it be for others too. Free and
at this time we ask for any special prayers to be brought before the Lord this day. Go ahead. Um, Lord, for healing. Sue? Errol. I saw him this week. He looked really good when I was there. Who? Oh, hi, Jim. Hi. <laughs> good to see you, brother. For the Bizarre family. Bizarre? Anything else? With that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. Almighty and everlasting God, on this last Sunday in the church here, we turn our thoughts to the great and awesome day when Jesus will come again to gather his elect and from every time and every place. For the believers, it will be a time of joy, peace, and fulfillment. As you have called us to care for the needs of people, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to empower us to help whenever the need arises, Lord, to confess you as Savior of all and to promote the Word of God in our lives and in our deeds. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we know that the day and hour are your choice. Your Word only says that the time is short. Give each of us a heart for the lost. Encourage us to speak the truth with love. Turn their hearts to you, O Lord, not for the sake of their good works, Father, but because Jesus shed his blood for them. Do not, let their enemy of our, do not let the enemy of our souls triumph in this schemes that he provides people to believe in themselves and not in you. We ask you to send your spirit to strengthen us and all the people of the world, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bless the families of our congregation and of all the congregations under your care, dear Lord. Give wisdom and patience and good humor to the fathers and mothers, the wisdom of Solomon, the patience of Job, the joy of the Holy Spirit, and the unconditional love that you yourself have for us, your children, which always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Guide the children in the way of truth and protect them all from evil. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Be with those we know and love who are sick or suffering, ill or preparing for procedures, for Gary Marty, Candy, Jean, Dolores, Harold, and Lois. Comfort them with your own presence, Lord. Strengthen their faith, and if it be your will, restore their health. Thank you for your awesomeness and your assurance that you will never leave or forsake your people. Guide these, your people, now and forever, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask you, great Father of all, to be with the Blankenbuehler and the Bazard families that they've lost, lost loved ones. Give them the reassurance of the Holy Spirit, of life everlasting, and the forgiveness of sins through Jesus Christ. Reassure them with the hope that you too shall, we shall live because you too shall have lived, lived also. We ask this, Lord, earnestly in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Help us to be a light in a dark world. Bless those who fight for the rights and the lives of the preborn. Give them courage and the tongue of those who are taught that I may know and sustain with the word him who is weary through Isaiah's word in chapter 50. Give them the honor and the privilege of the saving of all the little ones from death and offering the word of comfort, life, and forgiveness to all parents. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we ask you to break the chain of addiction so that many people who are in the kind of bondage in the sickness of sinful world, that our culture and society embrace and glorify these things that you hate, Restrain the tempted, give power to meet that temptation and to turn. Those who are hindered ungodly with ungodly influences in our country and causes all the viciousness, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to strengthen these, your people, to turn from these temptations both now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask you to be with Brad and Amy and their two newborn children, Charlie and Olivia. We ask you to give health and healing, safety and travel, and joy and thanksgiving in knowing your love in their lives, both now and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
We ask you to be at the leaders of our land and of our government with President Obama, President Harrison, and Bishop Steckholz that you give wisdom to meet the days ahead, knowing that all that they do and say are, should glorify your name and the return of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Father in heaven, look with mercy on us, your needy children on earth, and grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word, the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. We trust, O Lord, in your mercy to hear and answer us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam your son Jesus Christ our Lord and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trusts in him we give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink the fruits of his cross, and receive the blessing of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in body and blood. Amen. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us this day our daily bread. And Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. King of the bread.
table of Christ. May this, the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you now and forevermore. Depart forgiven by Jesus. Amen.
In this, the precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you. Depart now in his peace and love. Amen. Body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you. Depart now in His grace. Amen.
Let us together rise for the post-communion canticle. you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us to this salvation gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. At this time, we ask for any announcements to come forward. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Kathy Stannis, and I just have a couple of reminders. Number one, in your bulletin, there's a green insert uh, for point set of orders. Please fill those out and get those back to me as soon as possible. And second of all, um, in two weeks, we're going to have our Advent event, which is... The children are going to, the Sunday school children are going to be singing during our Advent devotion at 5 p.m. that night, and we're also going to be having a dinner. So I need as many people as possible to sign up on the board in the narthex, but also especially the parents of our Sunday school students, because they will be singing that night. Thank you. And by the way, just to remind you that this, in many ways, we combined all of our things from last year into one day, so we didn't have as many things. So that night, we will also have our auction to help out some of the families. We're going to have that gift auction that night, so just remember that. 
Okay, it's the day. Secret Angel questionnaires are filled out, and I'm passing them out to the Secret Angels. Remember, next week is the first present. So if you're going to be away for Thanksgiving, you've got to get it to the church so that it can be here next Sunday so that we don't have tears. Thank you. <laughs> but wait, Barb, I didn't give you my sheet. <laughs> That's what they keep telling me. They've told me that my whole life. That's not too old. <laughs> Uh, good morning, uh, Jan Simmons here, and I um, wanted to let everyone know that Thursday, December the 18th, is our annual LWML Cookie Exchange for Meals on Wheels. This is a wonderful opportunity to show we care, not only to the participants of Meals on Wheels by providing a beautiful bag of Christmas cookies, but also to those members who prepare the meals by providing a dessert for one of the days. So um, they now have 200 participants in Meals and Wheels in Peters Township, and 50 of those are diabetic. So we're going to need every woman in the congregation to make their favorite batch of Christmas cookies, and we'll be getting together at um, my home at 7 o'clock for some Christian fellowship and Christian caring by putting the cookies into bags. And we also hope to have enough to provide to the extended care at Concordia uh, Lutheran of the South Hills. So um, there, Kathy has made a wonderful sign-up sheet in the back, so um, please sign up. If you can't attend that night, we ask that you still bring cookies, and you can leave them in the church kitchen um, by 6 o'clock on the, um, Thursday the 17th, so, or the 18th, sorry. <laughs> so thank you. That perfectly follows the sermon, Jan. Way to go. Somebody's listening. Say hi, Zoe. Say hi. Go say hi. Hello. No? I'm sorry. Okay. We have magnets, so if you bought magnets, come get them. Bye. Well, that's great, Trinity, or, uh, Clarice. Right to the point. Trinity, watch her head. Yep. Yeah, that would be bad. <laughs> Just a reminder, this Saturday, uh, which is Saturday after Thanksgiving, we're going to be uh, coming in to the church at 9 o'clock, and we're going to be putting up the Christmas tree, decorations. Uh, all the help we can get would be appreciated. Uh, a lot of work goes into decorating the tree, putting the tree up, all the lights, the trimming, and everything uh, there. So uh, if you'd like to, Kathy, do we have a sign-up sheet? There is a sign-up sheet out there. I thought there was. So if you can be here, uh, just put your name and how many people are going to be here so we have an idea how long we're going to be here. <laughs> so, um, And second of all, um, any trustees or any gentlemen that are um, available right after church, uh, we've got in the corner of the narthex is uh, um, some pumpkins and gourds and a hay bale or straw bale. Do you want the straw? <laughs> um, and corn stalks uh, there. If we can get some help, just kind of clean that up and get it out of here. Um, if anybody wants pumpkins, gourds, or wants to take any of that, uh, it's all for the taking except for the hay bale. Right. And I should <laughs> say, if you don't know, Chris uh, has been instrumental. If you came in today, you notice that our electric sign is now up. Now, you got to bear with us. We're still getting some programming things. But uh, Hal, Hazley, Chris, and myself on Monday uh, at Sub-Zero, uh, put that bad boy up, but Chris deserves an extreme thanks for all the hard work at designing the sign down there. And uh, if you remember, I don't know, Randy, how many years ago this started, but probably 30, but you know, uh, back when this started, about 10 years ago, they got some quotes and some bids, and the cost was somewhere around 30000 if I'm not correct. And uh, I can happily say Chris has uh, helped us to spend no more than about $10,000 on buying the sign and all the supplies and all the hard work from some of the folks helping us pour concrete. So again, we want to just thank Chris and all the folks that helped. Wally Klein, uh, I just want to remind you this is the season of the holidays. Today's the last day of the church year. Thursday is Thanksgiving, 25th of December is Christmas, and guess what comes next? New Year's. 
Lutheran Layman's League is in its 65th anniversary uh, to supply the float at the parade in uh, as, me, Pasadena. Pasadena. California. There you go. Thank you. Uh, so uh, they're now getting ready to start. My daughter and two granddaughters are going to be pedal pushers. But in a, if you can't get out to pedal push, we, they would appreciate a donation to help in furnishing the flowers and that for this beautiful float. So I'll be passing these out if you want at the end of the service. Thank Thanks, you. Wally. So it's been a while since I've been here. Um, for those of you who don't know, I uh, recently graduated high school and went off to college in uh, Concordia of Nebraska. And I would like to thank everyone for all the support that you gave, whether it was to help provide food or just prayers, because it is truly a fantastic experience I can honestly say going from high school where I'm surrounded you know, by people to people who are truly devoted to God and to doing his works, it is such an amazing experience. And I don't think I could get anything like it anywhere else. Um, so truly and th and. and Sincerely, thank you for all the help that you guys give to all the students at Concordia. Thanks, David. With that, let us together rise and close our service with song. <laughs> 